We understand that the attacker was British born, but that reportedly he was not part of a list of 3,000 Britons that uh, the security agencies and intelligence in this country keep this list of potential homegrown radicals that could be led to carry out an attack. He apparently was not on that list. The prime minister said today that uh, he was once part of an investigation from MI5 that suggested that he was involved in a radical violence, but that he was a, quote, peripheral figure. Also today, ISIS has claimed responsibility for the, this attack, saying one of its soldiers carried out uh, this series of attacks uh, at Westminster, but uh, it's still unclear. Despite that claim of responsibility through ISIS's so-called uh, news agency, it doesn't necessarily mean it was inspired by them or organized by them. They're just taking credit for it. Here's what the prime minister told members of parliament earlier about that attacker. His identity is known to the police and MI5, and when operational considerations allow, he will be publicly identified. What I can confirm is that the man was British-born and that some years ago he was once investigated by MI5 in relation to concerns about violent extremism. He was a peripheral figure. The case is historic. He was not part of the current intelligence picture. You might be able to hear the police helicopter just overhead. It has been hovering, well, since yesterday, since these attacks, keeping a close eye over Westminster. Police have had a flurry of uh, activity over the past 24 hours and overnight, specifically making eight more arrests at six addresses here in London and in Birmingham. They continue to say that the attacker acted alone, but clearly they must think that the people that they have now detained had something to do with this or have reason to believe that, Heather. Thomas, we heard from the Prime Minister in that speech. She paid tribute, certainly, to the police officers who stopped the attacker, and one, of course, gave his life in doing so. She paid tribute to the first responders who helped those who were injured and who died. She also, though, paid tribute to Londoners who are clearly going about their lives this morning, not so much there around Westminster, but wherever they are in their neighbourhoods and their workplaces. What are you hearing from Londoners and about Londoners as they pick up things this day after. Yeah, members of Parliament and uh, peers from the House of Lords are both back to work uh, at special sessions uh, in uh, the Parliament today. But members of the Parliament, just, uh, members of the public, just you and me, couldn't walk up to Parliament as we normally would and be able to, to go in uh, for a tour. Those have all been closed for the day. The forensic investigation very much is still underway. Uh, London, though, very busy city, still a hub of activity today outside uh, the police uh, perimeter. Here is what we're hearing from a few Londoners today. It's fate, isn't it? I can't I think you just have to go on with your life and uh, as normal. And if something happens, well... But life's got to go on. Life okay. has got to go on. And it just makes me more determined that these awful people aren't going to get away with it. Why should we stop our, living our lives the way we do for these nutters? I can tell you just from living here for the past year and speaking with people, anytime there's been any type of similar attack uh, in uh, continental Europe, how people here keep saying, well, it's probably just a matter of time until we are a target. Uh, it is a day they feared, they didn't want to say was coming, uh, but uh, of course now it has.